Michael Whitman, nicknamed the Black Baron, one of the greatest legends of World War II. He is credited with an official record of 141 tanks and 132 anti-tank guns killed. Most of these targets were made on a Tiger-type battle tank, which at the time was the most powerful and advanced armored vehicle in the world. In this program, we're going to analyze one of his most used techniques that helped him achieve this number of victories, starting mainly in the summer of 1943. In addition, among other issues, we will see why the Tiger was so important and what was the impact it had. To finish off the video, at the end of the program, we are going to reproduce the tactic used by Whitman with a simulator. However, before we get to that, let's do a little introduction about Whitman's career in World War II. The story of our German tanker in the army begins at the end of 1934, when Whitman enlisted in the German army. Two years later, after graduating as a soldier, he would enter the military branch of the SS and become part of an elite unit that was being formed, this being the famous Leibstandarte. Little by little, Whitman specialized in vehicles, and by September 1939, during the first campaign with Poland, he commanded a light reconnaissance vehicle called the SDKFZ-222. For the French campaign of May 1940, Wittmann was once again the spearhead of Army Group B within the Leibstandarte Division. In this way, with his reconnaissance vehicle, he ended up making his way to the heart of France. It was during the German military action in the Balkans when Whitman was given a Stug III with a short barrel, which he would also carry during the invasion of the Soviet Union. Although with this armored vehicle he was able to destroy his first T-34S, the vehicle was not prepared for that task. He fought with it until mid-1942, after which, due to his good aptitude, he was sent to the Waffen SS Officer Academy in the Alps to become an officer. During this period, he also received training with the new tank that Germany was about to put into action, this being the famous Tiger. Following his return to the Eastern Front in January and February 1943, Whitman finds that the situation has completely changed and his unit is now involved in defensive fighting around Kharkov. During this period, Whitman was not yet assigned a Tiger-type tank, as there were still very few of them, and he had to command a Panzer III-type armored vehicle. It was with this tank that he participated in the offensive operations planned by Manstein in the vicinity of Kharkov. A few months later, shortly before the Battle of Kursk, Wittmann received one of the 13 Tigers that were delivered to the Leibstandarte Division, and it would be with this armored vehicle that he would go down in history. Well, having already analyzed his combat history to date, let's now look at one of the most famous and effective tactics that Whitman used on the battlefield. The first thing we have to take into account is that whether during Operation Citadel or in the fighting after Kursk, the Soviets had a great superiority in terms of the number of battle tanks. This condition led them to send wave after wave until they managed to push the Germans back. The advantage that the Tiger gave to the German armored formations was that for the first time, with this new tank, they could shoot down the T-34S at a distance of between 2,000 and 1,800 meters. Thus, they enjoyed more than a kilometer of advantage in which they were invulnerable to the Soviet armor. This forced the armored vehicles of the Red Army to have to advance through the large open spaces of the completely exposed Russian steppe before being able to approach a position in which they would be able to shoot down this advanced German battle tank. Due to the enormous avalanche of armor that the Soviets were capable of launching, their tanks even ended up ramming the German Tigers, mixing with them and wreaking havoc. It was here that Whitman carried out a series of traps with the aim of disconcerting the Soviet formations and making his advance become completely chaotic. In this way, he bought more time and made the T-34EL remain in positions where they were most exposed for as long as possible. This trap, which we are going to see first in theory, and then we are going to reproduce it in real visual combat, consisted of the following. After a first wave of Soviet armor, which the Germans had been able to repel, the Germans had no choice but to prepare to receive a second. It was here that Whitman used to take the opportunity to move forward and take positions on the flanks of the future attack. 
Whitman took advantage of any type of element that could provide camouflage, whether it was a group of trees, a house, or a wall, and even the destroyed enemy vehicles themselves, as was the case of Kursk, for example. Once our Tiger commander positioned himself in this forward position, he knew perfectly well that he was taking a chance, and that he had a chance of being discovered by the enemy in the next attack, and that he would be completely exposed. However, due to the desperation of the situation, Wittmann had no choice but to take these risks in the hope of inflicting large numbers of losses on his enemy. With the German defensive line recovering from the previous attack, and with Whitman advanced on one flank, the Soviets once again sent a new wave. It was specifically in Kursk, while Whitman was positioned between two destroyed and smoking T-34 SS, when the Soviet column passed a few meters away from him without realizing his presence. While the Soviet armor was heading at full speed towards the German positions, from which the Germans were already beginning to fire with everything they had, Wittmann then began to fire from his position, taking the Soviet tanks from lateral or rear positions. This action naturally caused great confusion among the Soviet columns, which were often paralyzed without knowing what to do. If they continued forward, they would be easily destroyed from the side or from their rear, since they did not know at that time how many enemy armored vehicles there were in these positions. On the other hand, if they turned around and started shooting at this tiger that seemed to come out of nowhere, they would then be more exposed to the fire that the other German tanks they were heading towards were already firing at them. This generated all kinds of situations in which each tank made a decision, resulting in great chaos that ended in tragedy for the Soviets and filled the battlefield with dozens of their destroyed tanks. To give us an idea, in one of these waves in which Whitman resorted to this tactic, they could wipe out the entire German unit with 50 Soviet armored vehicles without suffering practically any losses on their part. Well, after having already seen the theory of this trap, let's now move on to represent it visually. We can see that a Soviet offensive has just ended and that the battlefield has been filled with destroyed Russian tanks. Now the Germans are recovering to withstand a new attack from the Red Army. In the rear, Whitman's Tiger waits, hidden for his opportunity. Again, we see how the Soviet tanks attack. The Germans occupying the main defensive line begin to fire. Little by little, the combat is intensifying. It is at this moment that Whitman appears from the rear and creates total chaos among the Soviet troops. As they decide whether to move forward and turn to face the new threat, the Soviet tanks are shot down at full speed. It is a risky move, but if it goes well, it can have very positive results. Well, we have already seen, in the best possible way, what Whitman's tactic consisted of. It is clear that it is a tremendously risky tactic, but if it goes well, devastation to the enemy attack formation is assured. Whitman reached the figure of 100 armored vehicles destroyed during the first days of January 1944, after which he was decorated with the Knight's Cross, also receiving the oak leaves days later. His most famous action would come six months later in the small Norman town of Villers-Bocage, where he single-handedly managed to stop an English armored brigade belonging to the British 7th Armored Division. When he died on the battlefield on August 8, 1944, the number of pieces of armor destroyed was around 141. Would you like to analyze more battles of Germany's most famous panzer races? I leave you the program in which we analyze up to five of these amazing actions, including that of Michael Whitman in Villers-Bocage.